how to make a modded Minecraft server. In this video, we're going to go over exactly how to start a modded Minecraft server from downloading Forge, getting it set up on a server, and then getting that server joinable. It's all going to be covered in this video. First things first, though, I do want to mention that the server we're starting here is not meant to be public. It's also going to be using your own computer's resources, meaning you're going to need a decent computer to be able to run this Minecraft server on it. And on top of that, it's only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust, because it's hosted on your own computer, meaning anyone with the IP to this server can find out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, as well as do things like DDoS you and hit your internet offline and things like that. So if you do want a public server or you don't want to have to worry about hardware, you want the easiest way to start a Minecraft server possible, that's where Apex Minecraft Hosting comes in, who's the sponsor of this video. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own modded Minecraft server in under five minutes with just a few clicks. We actually love just Apex so much that we host every single Minecraft server we have on Apex Minecraft Hosting, and truthfully, Apex Apex is the best way to start a server. Even if you want to add mod packs, they have one click installation of over 200 mod packs on Apex. So again, you can go check them out at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own Minecraft server that can be public or private and have as many mods as you want, whether that's a mod pack or whether that's mods you've added yourself. Again, get your server started in under five minutes at Apex Minecraft Hosting, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Nevertheless though, if you are okay with using your own computer's resources, if you're okay with using your own internet, and if you're okay with this server only being for your friends, your family, people you trust, well, in that case, let's go ahead and get this server started. First things first, we need to download Forge here. To do that, go to the second link in the description down below, and it will take you here. This is our guide on how to get Forge locally, and you actually will need to do this, but so will everyone who's played on your Minecraft server as well, so it's super important that you go and basically keep track of this tutorial because you'll need to send this to all of your friends. They'll need to install Forge as well. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and click on Download Forge here and it will take us to Forge's official download page. As you can see by default, Minecraft 1.19.2 is selected here. If it's not selected for you, come over here to the left hand side, click on 1.19 and select 1.19.2 until it does show. Once it does, come under Download Latest and then click on the Installer button here and then it will take us off to Add Focus. We're stop! Don't click anything on this page whatsoever. Just put your hands in the air and don't click on anything, okay? Wait about 10 seconds and then after about 10 seconds, a red skip button will appear in the top right. The only thing you want to click on this page is that red skip button. When you click on it in the bottom left, Forge will begin downloading. And as long as Forge is in the title, which ours is, you can keep that file or save it either in the bottom left of Google Chrome or in the middle of your screen on Mozilla Firefox. No matter what though, as long as Forge is in the title, it's safe to keep it. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser here. And let's go ahead and move Forge to our desktop. So to do that, click the little Windows icon, top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. And yes, this tutorial is fully working on Windows 11. Click on that little Windows icon and then type in Downloads. You have this Downloads file folder here. Open this up and in here you'll have Forge. Drag this to your desktop. Now before we actually install anything for the server, we need to install Forge locally on our computer. So to do that, go ahead and right click on this, click on open with, click Java and click OK. But Nick, I don't have Java or I don't have the same icon as you here. Well, in both of those scenarios, you need to go ahead and download Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft mods and servers. And guess what? This is a modded Minecraft server. So you are definitely going to need Java 17 downloaded. Luckily, we have this super in-depth guide that goes over everything you need to know to get Java 17 up and running in Minecraft. There's a video to Tutorial, there's an in-depth text tutorial. Once you've done that, you may need to run the jar fix. It's going to take all the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, basically making them work with Java automatically and making those icons actually look correct, right? So the icons, if they weren't like mine, will be after you run the jar fix. Now, let's we can go ahead and minimize our browser, right click on Forge, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. When we do this, it's going to open up the mod system install for Forge, where first we want to click Install Client, click OK. It's not going to download Install Forge. The only reason this won't work is that if you have Minecraft open, you have the Minecraft launcher open, or if you've never played Minecraft 1.19.2 before. If you've never played Minecraft 1.19.2 before, go play it, come back, and this will work. Otherwise, if you have Minecraft or the launcher open, close out of both of those and redo this, and it will work. But as you can see, successfully install Client Profile Forge for version 1.19.2. Awesome. Click OK to close out of that. Now, don't delete this yet. We still need to get the Forge server files. To do that, right click on your desktop, create a new folder, and then title this Forge 1.19.2 server. You can actually title this folder anything, but that way you know what it is. It's your Forge 1.19.2 server. Go ahead, open this up. There shouldn't be anything in here. So let's go ahead and get the server files. To do that, right click on Forge again, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. And this time, we're going to click Install Server instead of Install Client. When we click on Install Server, this red box appears, right? 
That's because we need to move where these server files are going to go. So to do that, click the three dots in the red box here on the right side. It's gonna open up this kind of file browser. Click on desktop on the left hand side and then click on forge 1.19.2 server. Click open and boom, the red box disappears. That means we're good to go. We can go ahead and click OK. And when we do that, now all the Forge server files are going to download and get set up in the Forge 1192 server folder here. You can see they are already starting to generate. Nevertheless, once this is done, it will give us a success message and then we can get the server started. It's actually pretty simple once you've got this success message. So go ahead and click OK. It's going to close out of that. You can actually delete this installer from your desktop now. We don't need it anymore, but let's go ahead and open up our Forge server directory. In here, we have a few things. We have the run.bat file, run.sh, and the JVM arguments. JVM argument is actually where you can get some information on adding RAM to your server. For example, you can uncomment this to set it to four gigabytes of RAM on your server, but to start your server, you're gonna double click this run.bat file. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to start, it's gonna generate some files, as you can see, but ultimately it's going to fail. And it's because you need to agree to the ULA.txt in order to continue. So go ahead, press any key to continue. It's gonna close this out. And then now we have a new ULA.txt file. Open this up and assuming you do agree to the ULA here for the Minecraft server, go ahead and change this ULA equals false to ULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Click file, save. It will save the ULA.txt and you can close out of it. Now, when we double click on the run.bat file, it will go ahead and start our server. This can be seen because we will not only get a mods folder, but we will also get things like a world folder. We will get different stuff that's actually needed from Minecraft, not just from Forge. So as you can see, we've got the, you know, ops.json, that's where all of your opt players will be stored, your server.properties have generated, and of course the world folder is generated as well. If we come back over here, we can see that happening. The world folder is generating, spawn area, all of that stuff is coming through. And once it is complete, we can actually join the server. Now at this particular moment, we're the only people that can join this Minecraft server, but I do recommend you going through and joining it this way, just to make sure before you go through the port forwarding and get all that done, that you can at least join the server. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the server directory here. We're going to leave this up. By the way, this opened behind it. This is just mirroring each other, right? So if we go ahead and op ourselves on this server by coming over here and typing OP and then our username, right? Like so, and hit enter. It's going to be shown over here and it's going to be shown down here. If we uh, extend this out one second, we'll be able to see Nix Games made a server operator. So that is on both of those and it is mirrored. It doesn't matter which one of these you have. They're both showing the exact same information, except this one does show the memory usage, whereas the, uh, you know, console doesn't. Just kind of personal preference. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. Now, before we play Minecraft, we actually need to play Minecraft with Forge. Forge is required to be running through Minecraft as well as on the server to join it. So if we open this up here, we'll be able to see that we have a Forge profile automatically. 99% of you will have that profile, but if you don't, that's where our in-depth guide on Forge comes in, because in this video we go over exactly what to do if you do not have a Forge profile. It shows you how to create one yourself and all that stuff, but like I said, 99% of people will have a Forge profile, right like so. There is our Forge profile. Before we get on into that, I'm going to go in here and change our resolution, just because uh, it's going to be a lot easier once we see in-game if we have changed it. But nevertheless, you can go ahead and click play with this selected here. You're going to have to confirm you're playing mod in Minecraft by clicking play again. And once we do that, we can go ahead and launch Minecraft with Forge. Everyone who plays on your server must have Forge. Yourself, your friends, anyone else who joins your server must have Forge. Just a note, they also must have every mod that is installed in your server installed locally in their Minecraft single player as well. So those are two things that are very, very important to keep in mind. There is a video at the end of this video as well as in the description down below on how to add mods to this server. It goes into that more in depth. So that is why I don't include it here per se, but it is worth noting at this point. Nonetheless, once we have Minecraft open, right like so, we can see that Forge is installed in the bottom left and we can click on multiplayer. If you do get this warning, go ahead and click proceed and then we can go ahead and direct connect. Now you can also add this, your local server, but you don't have to. Direct connecting is going to work and since we're just joining a test, let's go ahead and do that. Your IP for your server is localhost. You're the only person that can join your server with localhost, but it is a good way to test. And as you can see on the left-hand side here, we have automatically joined into our Minecraft server and boom, we are in game. Now at this point, our server is working, our server is running. But in order for our friends to join the server, you will need to port forward. Luckily, we have an in-depth guide in the description down below on how to port forward a Minecraft server. This goes over everything you need to know. It goes in depth. It covers it all 
super, super in depth on how to port forward a Minecraft server. 13 minutes, as you can see, it's gotten over half a million views now, and it helps so much getting a Minecraft server port forwarded. Once you have port forwarded your server, your friends will be able to join using your public IP address, and that is all covered in this video as well. As far as adding mods to your server, that is an in depth video as well that's on your screen right now. Go check that video out. It will show you every step of adding mods because you also have to add those locally. Talks about what your friends will need to do to join your server with mods. That is covered. And we'll be using this server right here. Recording that literally right after this one. So go check out that video on how to add mods. Port forward if you want your friends to join. And we'll see you in the next one.